Hey guys, welcome back to Bioinformatics with R. Uh, we just got done doing some RNA-seq analysis with both DE-seq and with EdgeR. Um, now we're going to compare the two because there are two different pipelines, there are two different methods of analyses, um, and so we want to see how comparable our results are from the same experiment just using two different pipelines. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to load um, Tidyverse. Um, we're going to kind of move our data around a little bit. Um, so let's read in our EdgeR data. Um, this is going to be whatever you saved it as before. So for me, it was mouse, edger, results, zero, verse, one, dot CSV. I think that's right. Let's run it. Oh, um, let's run it again. Okay. So as you can see here, I have um, 223 observations. These were just our ones that were FDR, um, our significant genes. Um, and this was our p-adjusted over here. And I think we set it to 0.1, right? Let's see. Yeah, so we set it to 0.1 um, for IGR, which is good because I think there was less significant genes identified. Um, so now let's uh, load our DE-seq data. Um, so we'll read CSV, this should be in your main directory for using Praxis, uh, or wherever you saved it, hopefully your main directory. DEseq.csv, we named this much simpler. <laughs> um, okay, so DEseq, so you notice here for DEseq, we saved everything. So we have 22,000 genes. Um, so we need to trim that down uh, just to the significant genes. So we'll call this one DEseq2, and we'll say DEseq. And then we'll pipe it down um, and we'll say filter our p adjust to less than 0 0.05 okay so now we have 416 um, and did we do 0.1 for this or 0 0.05 we did 0.05 it looks like <clears throat> for this be adjusted uh, which is fine um, we could include more if we wanted to go back and rerun to eSeq or actually we could just filter it um, let's filter let's do the same so let's run it with a 0.1 p adjust so we have 652 so they're both the same stringency um, all right so now um, what we need to do to um, is we want to so we're going to use a package um, called uh, GoVen, so Gene Ontology Venn Diagram it's from this Gene Ontology package. Um, and so in order to for it to fit into GoVen, um, we need to uh, do something, um, filter out some of these columns. So as you can see, we have X, base mean, log two full change, the standard error for it. Uh, the stat, the p-value, and the adjusted p-value. Um, but we only need the name of the gene and the log full change. So uh, what we're going to do is say deseq2 and then we're going to say keep only columns 1 and 3. Because if we look at this, um, column 1 is our gene name, column 3 is our log full change, and those are what we want to keep. So we should have, uh, what did I do here wrong, up, oh. collection, up, oh, these have to be uh, uh, parentheses, okay, there we go. Okay, so now we should have two, right? So gene name, log full change, perfect. Um, so we have to do the same thing with that jar. Um, we're gonna call it, Edge R, um, and so the Edge R data set we have the gene name and log full change already right next to each other, so it's kind of easier. Um, so we're just going to say keep columns, ignore rows, or keep all rows, that's what the comma means, and then keep columns uh, one to two. All right, so Edge R, we should have genes and log full change, which is perfect. Um, 
So, but what we had to do is we had to change what the names are of those two columns uh, because GoVen reads it a, a specific way. Um, so we're gonna call it ID. It looks for these certain columns. Log FC. Oh, uh, column names of DC. Uh, Okay, so now if we look at DC2, we should have ID and log full change. Perfect. Now we have to make HR match. So we're going to do call names, HR, and those are going to be the exact same thing. So I can just copy this, paste this right there, and run that. So now HR should be ID log full change. Perfect. Um, so now we want to do a go vent. So let's look it up real quick. All right. Oh, interesting, it's not coming up. All right, so let's just go here. Alright, so GoVen is part of GoPlot, so we're going to have to install GoPlot and see you can take multiple data frames here, um, add a title and labels, um, etc. to the to the plot. Um, it's actually nice for gene expression. Um, so we need to um, install packages, go, is the pcapitalized in GoPlot? All right, so now we have to run the library. Go plot. Okay, I'm gonna hash this out because I don't want it to run every time, the install part, uh, run every time I uh, have to rerun the script. All right, so we're gonna run uh, go van, which is part of go plot, on deseq2 on edge R, so those are our two data sets. Our label uh, is, because we want to label our legend, um, it doesn't do it uh, intuitively. Let's see, do we DEC2 and edge R. Our title is going to be comparison of DEC and edge R. DE for differently expressed genes, because I don't want it to run like off the page, you know. Um, and I believe, oh, and then I'm gonna say plot equals false, um, because if, so it defaults to plot equals true, and it will give you a plot then, but it won't um, give you a table too. So if you say plot equals false, it'll save as a table and as uh, a plot, which is what we want. Um, unexpected comma. Da, 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 da. Oh, comma supposed to be there. Title, comma, plot equals false. Oh, let's get rid of that. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I have an unexpected one here. Okay. There we go. All right. So. We saved it as comp. Um, so now if we call comp, um, actually no, let's, we want to call, um, so comp saves two things. So I wonder if I do str comp, what it will say. Um, there's a lot of data in here, <laughs> holy cow. Okay, so because I think it's got the plot functions. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll just call comp. See, there's two things, there we go. Plot, there's a plot and a table. Um, so we'll run comp plot first. And under my picture here, you see we have our nice Venn diagram here. 
So what this is saying, so we have uh, comparison of DEC and HR differently expressed genes. So DEC is on the left here, it's pink, and you can see there are 230 genes that we identified with DE-seq that are upregulated, that are unique to DE-seq, and 266 that are downregulated, unique to DE-seq. Um, for EDGE-R, we have 37 that are unique to EDGE-R uh, that are upregulated, and three that are downregulated that are unique. And then this middle part here is the shared genes. And so we have 122 genes that are commonly identified between EDGE-R and DEC that are upregulated, and 61 that are downregulated. Uh, the yellow portion here is if you would identify a gene that's significantly upregulated for DEC and then significantly downregulated for EDGE-R, which means they're opposite, which would be probably pretty bad. It's good to know, it's good to have this number as low as possible because biologically it would make no sense if one of them uh, these processes is identifying it as upregulated and the other is downregulated. Uh, you'd have some crazy weird <laughs> weird stuff going on there. Um, but yeah, so you can see like 122 out of, what do we have total? 800. <laughs> it's not, uh, you know, uh, two, four, five. Yeah. Um, it's okay. So uh, let me show you one more thing. So if we do call comp table um, and run that, um, this just gives you the list. You could save this as a CSV if you want. So it gives you the list of the genes that are in each of these. Um, what are we doing here? Uh, let's pull this up so you can see. Um, that are in each of these sections, right? So like for the... Um, um, AB. Oh, that's okay. So, AB means both. That's the center section. I wish you would name it, right? So, A only would be our first one we put in, which was DEC. These are the genes that are uh, specifically down regulated for DEC, which is a ton of them, and then up regulated for DEC, and then down regulated. See, we only have th uh, three. Um, Zooming in. We only have three downregulated for uh, edge R, so those are the three, and then we have the upregulated for edge R. Then AB means the ones that are in the center there, right? So, um, so it's nice because um, I've been to a conference where um, sometimes there's a, a tendency um, for biologists sometimes that are dabbling in bioinformatics to or sometimes just hardcore computer scientists that are dabbling in bioinformatics to run analyses and then get a gene list like this and then say, ta-da, that's the end. Like, um, it's fine to identify, it's good work to identify differently expressed genes like this, but if you're not putting it into biological um, framework or a biological hypothesis or, or just the context of biology, you're not really a computational biologist, you're a computation. Oh, and so, um, so it's important to be able to, um, to say what are in each of these sections, right? So um, having this table aspect is nice because then you can dive in and be like, okay, what are the things in the table that are not, or what are these genes in the table? Are they specific to a pathway? Um, you could actually probably pull out the up and the down from each of these and run pathway analysis on those to see if different pathways specifically are identified by EDGE-R or DE-seq. Um, but <clears throat> it's always important to put things in biological context because you're learning computational biology or bioinformatics, not just computational coding and informatics, right? Um, so biologists first. These are great tools and you're learning to code and be a data scientist, but always remember to put things in biological context. Um, okay, so that is it. This is a nice short one. Um, you can see that there are differences. Before we, before we end, you might think, well, this is confusing. What would I use? Why, like, why are these different methods gonna be different things? Well, there's no right or wrong method. Um, they just, you can look into the, if you really want to look into like the, 
the theory underneath of them, you can pull up the documentation for DEseq and EdgeR and, and figure out why EdgeR is more stringent, it seems, than, than DEseq. But um, if I were running this anal these analyses, um, I would run both of them and probably publish both of them and say we ran EdgeR and DEseq to cast a wider net. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can do a Venn diagram and then if you wanted to focus more on the genes that are identified by both of them, you can say, you know, we're more confident that these genes have some sort of significant uh, um, relationship to our experiment because IGR and EDSeq both identify them. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the, a lot of times methods, especially in bioinformatics, are, um, you know, if you can justify them, then do it. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong. You're not going to get, you know, criticized for using DEC versus HR um, since they're both well-respected packages. All right, enough of my blathering. Um, okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, uh, it's fun to actually have data come out, right? Um, and so we'll be getting to some more uh, genetic, genomic stuff uh, in the coming videos. Um, so I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one.